Thanks a lot. So uh, my name is Ahmed Atnani. I'm working at uh, the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics. And I'm going to present um, Pixel. So it's an open source project, uh, kind of compiler for Python, a static compiler that uses Fortran as a backend uh, language. So there are different solutions, basically uh, using um, C or C++ or even LLVM. But this one is uh, using Fortran. Uh, so there are uh, different motivations for this work. Uh, basically, the f the, 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 the f for us working at uh, in research, uh, one of the things that we would like to do is to, uh, so I think like you, write fast code faster. But we uh, are working with quite complicated algorithms and the applications are also complicated. And... Uh, the language programming is complicated. And also the supercomputers super, uh, super that we are using are also complicated. So uh, we'd like to uh, have something that makes it easier for people to have, uh, so people like applied mathematician, computer scientists, or physicists, uh, to be able to work together and to have, let's say, to, uh, to, to, to remove all these bottlenecks of uh, super, supercomputers like uh, uh, programming language bottleneck or uh, memory wall or um, uh, portability or power uh, wall. So uh, uh, basically the idea is to uh, have something like a high level language to uh, to write uh, or prototype uh, our algorithms and at the same time we would like to be able to go easily from prototype to uh, production code. So depending on uh, on your applications uh, uh, production code may be very uh, uh, very uh, close to your uh, prototype code so you can just uh, tweak it a little bit and then you have your production code. So you don't need any uh, tools to accelerate your code or to use uh, low-level language or, or whatever complicated techniques. But maybe what you are interested in is to have uh, something that is more uh, uh, robust, more fast, and you want to avoid uh, Python runtime uh, execution. Uh, maybe you also want to use parallel computing because you are handling uh, big data and you use a lot of memory and maybe on your computer it's not running without distributing the memory. Uh, maybe also what you are interested in is uh, to have something that is really, really fast. Uh, maybe you want to go to even to exascale and uh, then you want uh, low-level code, complete low-level code with some Python bindings and have parallel computing, optimized code, and then tune your code on different architectures, either ma manually or automatically. So there are solutions in Python uh, to accelerate your code, like uh, Cython, we saw a talk before on it, uh, or Numba, Hope, Petral. So Cython uh, is... Uh, Maybe the, the standard way now to, uh, to accelerate Python codes, but the drawback of Python, uh, of Cython is that you, it doesn't ensure any backward compatibility. So, uh, you, you, you start from your original Python code and then you modify it. And at the end, it's not a Python, really a Python code anymore. Uh, and then it really relies on the Python runtime, uh, execution. Uh, the other uh, approach is to use Numba. So uh, it is based on LLVM. Basically, if you use Python with Numba, it's like if you are using uh, Julia. It's uh, somehow equivalent from my point of view. Uh, it is based on just in-time com uh, com compilation. Uh, Hope also is based on the same idea, and uh, the types are not given, uh, but are inferred automatically. Uh, Pitran is uh, maybe the closest uh, solution to uh, Pixel, and it converts the Python code to uh, C++ code, uh, where they did a lot of work on having some optimized C++ uh, code uh, that represents somehow or mimics somehow NumPy. And then you can also use explicit parallelism using OpenMP through a paradigm as uh, comments. So let me just uh, show you some, uh, some um, benchmarks that we did. So we have here uh, for different problems uh, uh, that are 
quite uh, standard. Uh, Python, Cyton, Numba, Pitran, uh, and Pixel, uh, they're using uh, GCC compiler or Intel compiler. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's always good to accelerate your code. Now the question is, what do you, uh, what is the price that you want to pay to, uh, to do it? So you see for sites and even after modification, mo modifying your code. So maybe I, I didn't did it uh, well for all the tests, but still we, uh, you put a lot of efforts and still the code is not uh, running fast. Uh, while for uh, Pitran, you have a nice speed up uh, uh, compared to even to Numba, but Pixel is really uh, outpassing them in uh, many cases, especially uh, when we use uh, Pixel Intel uh, Intel compiler. Um, so let me just briefly explain how this kind of, uh, of uh, technologies work. So uh, you start from your Python code. So it's the same, uh, the, the, the same strategy, I think, in many, many codes. So you start from your Python code and then, uh, rather than using the AST from Python, we use what we call the FST. So the FST is the full syntax tree, uh, where you have access to the comments of, uh, of the Python code. And then we, uh, start putting some annotation in these comments. And, uh, depending, so, and then we check this, uh, the syntax, so is checked by, uh, Red Baron also. And uh, depending on the annotation that you put, so the pragmas that you put, uh, we, you will be able either to access or interact with the accelerators like uh, OpenMP or OpenACC, or you can also have uh, the, the a DSL for macros, so it's uh, something that allows us to map sentences between third-party libraries in Python and uh, uh, low-level libraries like uh, BLAST, LAPAC, or uh, FFT, or MPI. Uh, and then uh, we use also uh, a DSL for types, and this allows us to uh, give the static, the static types. And then we use the inference type system and so on. So this is now uh, very uh, common in all the, these uh, technologies. Uh, the only difference that, uh, uh, that that we have here is that Pixel is built on the top of SymPy. So uh, we represent our uh, abstract syntax tree as nodes from SymPy, which means that uh, what Pixel does is that it converts your Python code to a symbolic expression. Okay, that's may maybe it's weird, but uh, what we did is this: is that uh, we just extended the 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 the, the symbolic objects in in uh, in SymPy, and then we we have now something that is uh, the code is really represented as a symbolic tree. The nice thing about this is that you can use all the capabilities of SymPy. So if you want, for example, to compute the complexity, the arithmetic complexity or memory complexity of your code, it's very easy. It's 160 lines to do it and so on. And then we extended the code generation of, uh, of uh, SymPy, especially for Fortran to be able to uh, handle more and more uh, stuff. <clears throat> Okay, so we have uh, basic and native uh, native types, uh, multiple precision. Also, we have it. Uh, we handle list arrays, uh, ND arrays for NumPy. So ND arrays are imp uh, implemented as abstract nodes. Uh, imperative programming is available, and what we do is really source-to-source -source approach in this case. We have now uh, some decorators, either for the types, or uh, for example, we can also modify the code using uh, some SymPy uh, functions. So we can, uh, since our code is based on SymPy, we can do it. Uh, and then we can also vectorize uh, the code, for example. So a uh, work in progress is on uh, oriented object programming and functional programming. Uh, and the idea is that we uh, manipulate the, the code when we use functional programming and we keep uh, really the source to source approach for the, 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 the standard way. Uh, one nice thing about Python is that we can implement iterators and constructs uh, easily. And uh, this is again in the spirit of the functional programming uh, approach. <clears throat> so we are covering OpenMP 4.5 using a BNF grammar, uh, using a TextX for those uh, who are interested. It's a very nice tool for, for BNF grammars. OpenACC 2.5. Uh, so OpenACC allows you to have uh, GPUs uh, and also CPUs. And then we cover uh, MPI, BLAST, LAPAC, um, and the MPI for Pi, uh, and BLAST, LAPAC, also FFT 
from SciPy. So using the macro, uh, the, the macro approach. So since I don't have a lot of time, I will try to be fast on this, but it's, uh, it's not quite, it's not complicated. So the idea is that we add some headers to the functions. So if you have a function, you only need to add a comment and say what is the, the, the type of your arguments. The rest is, comp is inferred by the, uh, the inference system. Uh, a function can have multiple types. Okay. So this is really static. Uh, but here in this case, we will be generating three functions, uh, for the, this, uh, Decker func that takes either an int or a double or a float. Uh, arrays are, um, are defined, uh, uh, this way. So in the C, in the C spirit. Uh, okay. So, uh, the, the, in order to have access to, uh, BLAS and LAPAC, we have, uh, we added the notion of header files. So you can have a file for header where you just declare the, the, the signature of your functions and there are also some meta variables there. Um, and then, for example, you can have a file like this. So it is uh, written in Python syntax, but uh, if you take a look at the DAXP function, it is not provided like this in, Sci in SciPy. So this is a DSL usage. Uh, what we do is that we map this last sentence to get a sentence that is uh, equivalent to, uh, to, to SciPy. Uh, this way we can really convert SciPy, uh, fi calls or st sentences to uh, the DSL uh, mode. So MPI the same way. So we have access to the MPI. So we can write uh, uh, MPI code directly using, uh, uh, this way. And then we have also the same, uh, the, the same approach to map sentences with MPI for Py. So, uh, here is an example for OpenMP where we add, uh, so here this is a matrix matrix multiplication. We added just uh, some annotation for OpenMP and then you can run it on, uh, on the cluster. So this is uh, in, uh, it uses 28 cores, up to 28 cores. And uh, you see that the code, uh, uh, the original code was taken 20 minutes and at the end I think it's less than uh, 10 seconds. Um, there are also, you can also call pixel from, uh, in an embedded way from Python. So you give it a function and then it returns you a function that is fast. You can uh, pixelize or e-pixelize a um, Python module also. And then I will show you just briefly uh, uh, an application that we did. So this is a 4D Vlasov uh, solver. Uh, it's um, so Vlasov uh, is, a, is, a, is a model that we have in plasma physics. So it's basically uh, a transport of a d distribution function that is four, four dimensional, two velocities and two positions. And we use a grid uh, based method for that. So you see the, the, how big is the grid size in this case. We have three advections and the, 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 the these advections are not done in the same way. So we have uh, different contiguity requirements. Uh, and so the code is using NumPy, SciPy, MPI4Py, uh, and Pixel also. Uh, so now we have code that is written in Python. Part of it is converted into Fortran and you see that uh, the Fortran code now will represent uh, maybe 30% of the code. And we are able now, this is the nice thing, is that uh, we go from the blue curve, from the blue curve there, to the red uh, curve with, uh, with squares. And uh, the, gr the green one is a pure Fortran code that we had before that was not, uh, that, that was scaling up to 256 uh, processors, while our new code is uh, now, now scales to uh, 4,000 processors. It is a Python code, pure Python code without any dependency written from scratch by a master degree student in less than six months. And we only had to do some manual uh, improvements, but this will be uh, added in the as new decorators. Okay, so we are doing uh, other applications. As I said, there is the code analysis that, for example, allows you to compute the computational intensity of your code and then helps you to write better code. We do automatic assembly of finite elements from uh, formal language, uh, mathematical language, uh, and then also for, um, for machine learning for PDEs using Gaussian processes. So to conclude, uh, Pixel is uh, a quite new uh, project. It's a static compiler for Python using Fortran as a backend language. Uh, it's, uh, it gives good results up to now. We are uh, looking to have 
uh, other paradigms like uh, functional programming that will uh, uh, enable us to do task-based par parallelism and have um, and have additional uh, decorators for that. So. Uh, if you are interested in it, just send me an email and then we can talk uh, about it or can talk after the talk. Okay. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, we actually don't have time for questions. Uh, lightning talk starting in five minutes in the big area down. Uh, thank you all for staying till the last talk. Thanks. Thanks for the yoga.